Hi, my name is Shannon and I work in the Hub at the Grays Lake Area Public Library. Today, we're going to be talking about the art of visible mending. Visible mending is simply the practice of taking an old piece of clothing or item that needs repair and repairing it, but instead of trying to hide the mending, you're highlighting it. So for example, today I'm going to show you how to apply this technique to an old pair of jeans that I have that have several holes in it. And normally I would try to make a patch to cover or hide those holes, maybe use a piece of fabric that blends in and stitches that are invisible. Um, but instead I'm going to practice visible mending, which is I'm going to take a patch of fabric to patch that hole, but it's going to be a colorful fabric, one that makes more of a personality statement, and I'm going to be using embroidery to highlight that patch of fabric. So not only will it be mended and reinforced using the stitches in the patch, but it's also going to be a different decorative piece of clothing than I had before. It's going to be a pair of jeans that has some color and some personality in the way that I like it to be. So um, it's really about taking, not only taking an old piece of clothing and making it new and wearable again, but also about making it a completely new piece of clothing than you had before. Um, and it's trying to treasure that mending process and make it more common to mend your clothes and fix these items instead of throwing them out or getting rid of them. Um, so it's become a much more popular thing to do in the past decade or so. Um, you know, mending has been around forever. It's not a new idea to fix your clothes, uh, but the idea of highlighting those repairs is becoming a new sort of movement almost. Um, and so before I show you my project specifically and show you how you would go about practicing visible mending, I do want to show you a few different resources that I've found that highlight uh, different parts of this practice in general. So um, the first is a brand new book called Mend, a Refashioning Manual and Manifesto. And the author of this book goes into great depth about the history of visible mending, why it's important, different techniques that you can practice, how to do those techniques. And I particularly like how this book touches on so many different historical and cultural approaches to this. Um, she recognizes that this is not a new thing. This is something that's been around forever and different cultures have approached mending in different ways. And um, not only is it something that we can continue to practice, but we can add our own sort of flair to it. And um, so it gives a big picture to what visible mending is all about. Uh, the next book that I'm going to recommend is called Wear, Repair, and Repurpose. And this book provides several specific projects for you to practice visible mending, as well as a technique called upcycling. Um, you may have heard of this as refashioning as well, upcycling and refashioning. And they're very similar to visible mending, but instead of repairing the item to continue using it for its original purpose, like using a pair of jeans as a pair of jeans, you are turning that item into something different. So for example, there are a bunch of projects that show you how to make and use t-shirt yarn. And you're taking a t-shirt and instead of making it um, repaired or new designed to wear as a t-shirt, you're cutting it up and using that t-shirt and making it into yarn, which can then be used for crocheting or knitting or any sort of purpose. Um, so this book is a really cool way to sort of dive into that element of visible mending. It's kind of like a sister topic, um, but it does talk about visible mending in general as well. And then last but not least is a book called Mending Life by Nina and Sonia Montenegro. This book is my personal favorite because not only does it provide tutorials for how to do the mending itself, but it also provides a more poetic and almost emotional perspective on how to make things new and beautiful again. So all of these books can be checked out through our library. I really recommend them, especially if you're interested in learning more about different techniques of visible mending. Um, 
I may have mentioned there's lots of different techniques to practice this. So visible mending is sort of the overarching category and then we have several different ways to practice it underneath that category. But today we're going to focus primarily on a technique that is grown from sashiko embroidery. So really quickly, sashiko is a traditional Japanese embroidery that is going to reinforce the fabric by making a simple running stitch over and under the fabric. But in recent years with visible mending, it's been identified as a way to practice visible mending. So you're reinforcing your fabric by using the simple running stitch. And oftentimes it can create very beautiful, detailed geometric designs using that same stitch to create these very um, extraordinary, gorgeous pieces of fabric and clothing. And that's been around forever too. You know, it's not new, it's not unique to visible mending sashiko embroidery is very separate from visible mending it's its own thing um but i wanted to show you how to do this running stitch um we're going to use the running stitch which is a simple embroidery stitch to uh, reinforce the fabric on our jeans as well as adding a new fabric to it to patch a hole and um, before I show you how to do this, I do want to encourage you to learn even more about the historical and cultural background of Sashiko um, because it does have a history and a culture to it. And I always find that I can appreciate a craft or an art more when I learn where it's coming from. So I've included in the video a slide um, that you should be seeing now that has several resources. Two of them are ebooks that are available to check out on Hoopla, and they go over the traditional sashiko embroidery as well as how you can use it in some different projects. Um, they are way more accurate to what sashiko is all about. I'm just showing you something that's inspired by sashiko, not the actual real embroidery, so I encourage you to check those out, as well as the video available on Creative Bug. So Creative Bug is one of the digital resources that's available to Grays Lake Area Public Library cardholders. And there is a class on Sashiko sewing. So I recommend checking that class out if you want to get more in depth with Sashiko specifically. Again, I'm not showing you how to do Sashiko embroidery specifically. I'm just showing you a technique that's inspired by Sashiko. So, um, once again, I encourage you to check those out. The information will also be in the video description. But now we're gonna get started with my specific project so you can get a glimpse at what this really looks like practically. I'm gonna be mending, like I said, an old pair of jeans. I have already started this project, um, so I'm gonna be showing you from start to finish how you would mend a hole, but there are several holes that I've actually already mended. So I came to grab my pair of jeans, so this is the pair of jeans and um, this is the leg that I've already finished. So I'll sort of hold it up a little bit closer. You can see that there were two holes and instead of picking a denim fabric or something to cover up those holes, I am highlighting the holes by using a piece of fabric that really pops underneath. Um, and this is a fabric scrap. So it was a great way to use up some of the old scraps that I have from other projects. Um, and then I used the simple running stitch to attach that patch to my jeans. Um, and you'll see, obviously, this is a visible stitch. So this is the idea of visible mending. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. I have some more holes over here. So I'm going to show you how to approach this from start to finish and what sort of techniques you're doing. And we'll go from there. All right, let's get started. Okay. So we have our project here that we're going to continue working on. And then you're going to need some fabric. So I have a few scraps here that I've pulled from my scrap bin. It's important that you have a big enough patch that there's a couple of inches, an inch or two on the sides surrounding the hole because you don't want it to sort of shift and then realize um, that the patch wasn't large enough to begin with to account for the stitches. So I am going to choose a patch that's larger than my hole. Um, so it covers it completely, but it also has more space 
around it to allow for some mistakes or stretching or anything to come up. So um, you have your fabric that's going to act as your patch and then you're going to need some thread. So I'm just using regular DMC embroidery thread. I just wanted to use something I had on hand. So I have this thread here. And then you're going to want scissors, of course, to trim the fabric and threads. And you're going to want needles. You can use any sort of craft embroidery needle. You're also going to want some safety pins. Um, these are not required, but they are super helpful. They're going to hold down your fabric as you're embroidering. So I recommend safety pins. And then last but not least, I have an item here that's flat. I'm going to use this to put in between the pant leg. So that way I can try to make sure not to sew the front and the back leg together because then you wouldn't be able to wear your pants. So um, it's helpful to have a flat object to sort of put in the pant leg. You can use a piece of cardboard or something like that, but it isn't required. So just an added bonus. Um, so now that we have all of our supplies, we're going to get started. So let me set this stuff aside for a minute. And we're going to start by putting our fabric that we're using as a patch inside of the pant leg. And again, like I said, you want to make sure that you are positioning it so there's a little bit of leeway on the edges. And one thing I forgot to mention earlier, when you're choosing your fabric, if you're doing a patch for a knee, you want to make sure that you have a little bit of extra leeway so that you can bend your knee after you're done. So it may require you um, pinning your patch on and then trying on the pants while it's pinned with the safety pins, of course. That way you can tell how much extra fabric you're going to need for the knee but in this case this hole is on the thigh so i don't need to worry about that all right next what we're gonna do once we've sort of made sure that we have enough room on all the different sides of the hole this is an excellent time to put the flat item underneath your patch that way you don't pin the two legs together so I just put that coaster in there and that way you can see I can't pin all the way through to the back. It's only going through the first layer. And again, this will make sure that your patch doesn't move around, leaving you with another hole at the end of your project. So I'm just going to use a perimeter of safety pins. Now let's thread our needle. So we're going to take out a pretty long piece of thread. You don't want it to be too long because you don't want it to get tangled, but it's helpful to not have to continuously thread new needles. Um, and then we're going to tie a knot at the end. And this is just a simple overhand knot. In a lot of embroidery, you are not asked to knot. There's other ways to secure your yarn or your thread. But in this example, we want it to be knotted. And you're not going to be able to see it. So um, it doesn't really matter if it doesn't look as great. All right, so I've done a few overhand knots so it's nice and secure. And now it's time to thread my needle. All right, so... What we're going to be doing here is a simple running stitch. Now a running stitch, I'll show you on this scrap piece of fabric, is simply going in and out over and over again so that eventually you have whatever length stitch you want and it looks like this or like this. A lot of people try to make these stitches as even as possible. Um, so they'll draw a grid on their material with chalk or a washable embroidery marker. Um, 
and it'll try to get the size just right, the length just right, the space between the stitches just right. Um, but my personal preference is that it sort of looks uneven. I like that style because it actually looks homemade, you know, people can tell that I did it. Um, but it's really up to you. If you feel more comfortable drawing a grid, you can get some tailor's chalk and um, a ruler and draw a grid over your jeans and material. Um, and in Sashiko, especially when you're doing the different designs, it's really helpful to have a grid. But I am just going to sort of do it um, naturally. So we're going to do that running stitch. Um, and I, on my other leg, I did it vertically. So I went up and down the leg, but on this leg, I want to do it horizontally. So I'm going to go right and left. And because we have this knot, we're going to start on the inside of the jeans. So go ahead and put your hand with a needle on there. And it's going to be useful to start I don't know if you can see my needle here. It's going to be useful to start outside of the hole. You don't want to start right up against the hole um, because we are again securing it. So the more space that you have around the hole, the more secure the patch will be. All right, so I have put my needle inside the leg and I'm just going to pull up since it's knotted. So now I have my first set of running stitches to do. Um, normally you would go, you would decide how long you want your stitch to be and then insert your needle down through the fabric and pull it all the way through and do that one, one stitch at a time. And that may be your style that you'd like, but the nice thing that we can learn from Sashiko is that they load several stitches onto the needle before pulling it through. And that way we don't have to consistently go in and out, in and out, in and out, especially when we have this sort of complicated pant leg that we're trying to um, navigate. We don't want to poke ourselves too much. So I am just going to insert and instead of pulling all the way through, I'm going to come back up. So you see I have this space that's going to have a stitch, this space is going to be blank. I'm going to go back down, come back up. So now I have two stitches loaded onto the needle. Let me see if I can show you this a little bit up close. So you see I have several stitches loaded onto the needle before pulling through. And I'm just going to show you now what happens if I do pull all the way through. So now you can see that I've skipped several steps. I have a stitch and there are several underneath and that's saving me time and effort. You do wanna make sure that you're avoiding the safety pins because you don't want to secure those down with your stitches. I'm actually gonna move this one. Okay, so I'll show you again. You're gonna go insert down, bring the needle back up, then go down, bring the needle back up, and let's try it one more time. Bring the needle back up. So now I have several more stitches loaded onto the needle and I can pull through. See? So I'm doing several stitches at a time. And right now you can also see that that's going beyond the boundaries of this hole. So I've gone far enough in this direction and I want to turn around and do the same thing in the opposite direction. But in order to turn around, we're going to insert one more time. And then we're going, instead of continuing in this direction, we're going to turn our needle so it's pointing in this direction, in the direction that we're turning. And we're going to bring it up however far away we want the next line 
of stitches to be. So I'm just estimating. I'm gonna pull through. So now underneath the jeans, there'll be a stitch going in that direction. So we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're going to be going in this direction. Now you do want to be careful when pulling your thread through that you're not bunching it up. Cause if you keep pulling, you're gonna bunch up your leg here like that. So you wanna make sure that you have enough slack that they're just sort of loosely sitting there rather than bunching up your jeans. All right, and then we're going to do the same thing that we did on this side to turn, to go back the other direction. We're going to insert the end of the row and then turn our needle to go this direction and bring it up a little bit ways away. And you can see this is an example of where having the Sashiko thread might be useful because you're not going to have the strands separate. All right, so we're just going to keep going this direction. And this is basically how you will do the whole process. Um, you'll just keep doing these same running stitches over and under across the entire hole. And then when you run out of thread, you wanna make sure to um, end with the thread underneath the jeans on the inside rather than on the outside. And then we'll go back and um, turn our jeans inside out in order to tie up those knots. Okay, so here we have our final project. I have finished stitching the entire hole and I may go back and add some stitches in that little corner there because it looks a little bit weird. But everything is secured, so I'm going to turn my pants inside out and show you the inside and what that looks like. Now, I had planned to show you this on the video, but I had some technical difficulties and it didn't work. So I'm just going to show you what I did here. I went back and I threaded my needle using the ends that I had left loose in the inside and I just pulled those behind several embroidery stitches. So hopefully you can see how the ends are secured behind past stitches. Um, this is why it's important to leave a long enough end when you're changing threads so that it can be threaded in the needle again and secured behind these stitches. But as you can also see, I've trimmed around the border of the fabric so that it's pretty close to the stitches. Um, and this is just to make sure that there aren't any big pieces that can help rip out the stitches that we just did if they get caught on your foot or something. I've also gone back and trimmed any of the threads that are knotted so that they're shorter and just generally cleaned up the back. So that's about it. I hope that you've enjoyed watching this video and that you've learned more about visible mending. I really hope that the resources that I've shared in this project can spark your imagination and maybe get you brainstorming about how you can use visible mending in your own life. But either way, thank you again for joining me.